evening and welcome to episode 2 of Take 2, the War Machine and Hordes uh, vlog where I paint a miniature and discuss various things related to Private Press. This week I am continuing on with Thorn. He is nearly fully base coated. Getting there. Slowly but surely. And uh, this week I'm going to be talking about uh, Reckon, the War Machine and Hordes book, with, no sorry, the War Machine book. Uh, which was released recently. Uh, most of you listening will know what's in it and what's happening with it. So I'm going to do a quick recap and give my opinions. Uh, to prevent this video from going for about two hours, I'm just going to do what I think is the best thing for each of the categories. So Warcaster, Warjack, Colossal, etc. And then give the one which I feel is the worst. And then I'll also give a brief summary of, or well not summary, but my um, feelings on the fluff because I feel that that is something which is ignored by too many people who review the Privateer Press products or especially their books. Uh, they just ignore the fluff and things related to it. So I'm going to launch right into it. So uh, first category will be Warcaster. Uh, the best Warcaster in Reckoning, I believe, is Haley 3. Not because I'm a Signal player, but because of the potential she represents. The ability to have multiple Warcasters and Warlocks in a unit, I feel, is very um, game-changing. I think that Haley 3 represents a big change for possible future releases for Private Press, and I think it is an excellent thing to show that they are showing a bit of innovation. Because too often in games like this, they become stale and they're too afraid to risk what they have and don't want to push the boundaries at all. And I feel that Haley 3 is uh, both excellent for Signar as a faction and is excellent for the game as a whole. And hopefully this will be something that happens more often. Um, her with Saren and R Rius, um, I believe their their potential for future for future releases. Uh, their yeah, the potential they have for future releases and you know possible teaming up of Warcasters just to make a unit for the hell of it um, is really good. Uh, the worst Warcaster now this in my opinion, shows the strength of this book, not necessarily shows that this Warcaster is the worst in the book. Uh, but I do believe it's Thyron, the Retribution Warcaster. And the reason why I feel he is the worst is because everybody's just like, yeah, he does stuff, it's cool. But nobody's like, yeah, he's awesome. You know, people, people, are, people are pleased, but not ecstatic. And that's, he's about the only one. And, I mean, the people are sort of, both sides of the fence about Denny 3, but my personal opinion is that she is one of those Warcasters that will not work, and then someone will figure her out, and then she will work 100% of the time. And then that's that's my opinion on Haley, uh, on Denny 3, is that eventually someone will figure her out, and it, it will work, she, and she will become a powerhouse, just like everything in Creeks. Um... So, but aside from that, uh, I actually think all the Warcasters as a whole were solid, but I think Haley 3 was the best, and Thyron was the worst. But, as I said, that's nothing against Thyron, it's just because people have just acknowledged him. Uh, moving on to Warjax, Cardor takes out both the winner and the loser in this one. Uh, if you haven't guessed by now, the winner is, of course, Rowan. That guy is phenomenal. I think he is quite possibly the best thing to have happened to Cador in a very very long time um, and yeah he's going to be seen in every two I have almost a hundred percent belief that he will appear in a hundred percent of um, card or pairings from now until eternity and he is yet yeah, really quite game-changing for uh, card or jacks because I think now they've card actually has two options instead of just throwing in random crap they can take one good warjack with both of their casters not you know does this caster work with behemoth no does this caster work with i mean you know and beast 09 and does this war caster work with any of the other characters no therefore it's just jank jack to fill points 
The worst war, Jack, by far in this book, is the Mad Dog. Jury Reed dis- uh, bollocks ability is just awful. And I don't feel as though the rest of what they gave that poor Jack is ever means it'll ever see the table. That will be the poor, poor, poor reject of uh, the Cardoran War Jacks. I will be honestly surprised if I ever see that thing on a table because it is now unless somebody's playing it for fun you know if somebody's playing it for fun but that doesn't really count but yeah I, I, I never expect to see that thing on the table the Colossals I believe the Sepulcher is the best of the Colossals in this book I believe the potential it represents especially with Gorshay 3 is ridiculous and I am scared to see it in the future um the worst one is Victor, but I don't... So there seems to be two schools of thought with the Victor. It's awesome or it's awful. There is no middle ground for it. Everybody either loves it or they hate it. My opinion on it is actually varied. I feel that it's okay with things like Harkovich. The only thing is it means that Harkovich has to take Dougal. Because Rat Zero is terrible on a Colossal. But at the same point in time, it does have an attack which doesn't deal damage. It just splashes with auto fire. So that's not bad. And with 20 inches of range, it's not bad. So it has got it reaches out and touch infantry swarms a long way. So I don't have that much of a problem with it, but I do think it is the worst. Um, and the Sepulchre is by far the best. I think the... All the other ones, even Victor, have some lists they belong in and some lists they don't. Whereas the Sepulchre, I don't think... I don't see the purpose in the Kraken now that the Sepulchre exists. I just think it's... I think it's a strict upgrade. Um, units. There's only two units in the book. There's one winner and there's one loser. The winner, therefore... I mean, if you... I don't count the Cephalix stuff that was released in the digital-only Cephalix book. Purely and simply because... It's technically already been released and has been out for a long time at this point. So I, do, I don't count it. Um, so the only two units are the Devil Shadow Mutineers and the House of Via Electromancers. Obviously, they are in that order. Uh, the Devil Shadow Mutineers represent a very good um, unit for both Creeks and certain mercenary lists. I'm not going to say all, but they're good in some lists. And the House via Electromancers, I mean, they're, they are the premier unit which should have had Force Barrier. I think with Force Barrier, they're playable. Without Force Barrier, they're just too big to me. They're four points for the game's possible premier victim stats. And I just don't think they'll survive long enough when you can take them out at power, on power seven blast damage on sixes. It's just not enough. They just won't make it to the front lines and they'll never contribute to the game. I, I At least that's my feelings on it. Um, I still think some people will pick them up and play them just to test them, but I have a suspicion they will then be put back into the, into the shelf, onto the shelf once they're done. Um, and then the last one is the solos. So my personal opinion, this is a, I think this is, a, this one's actually a lot more hotly debated. This is probably the most hotly debated thing. I think uh, Ferris or Pyrrhus or Pyrus, whatever, um, the Protectorate solo for nothing more than 15-15 with five boxes is disgusting um, because it means that, because most things which have high defense, like defense 15, usually get killed by blast damage, but blast damage, you need, you know, average dice does seven, so you need power nines, which means you have a power 18 blast. And there aren't many of those in the game. And then, unfortunately, the Swamp Gobber River Raiders are the worst solo in this book. I don't think they're any good. People who say that Hawk makes them better, yes. But that's like saying... You know, it's, it's polishing a turd, in my opinion. They're not worth their points. They're cool. They're one of those things where I, I, I will see them again in lists run by people who would like, 
who like running themed list or not and not theme lists but themed lists so you know running whatever it is you know stuff that they want to play because they want to play it not because they not because they want to win and that's fine uh, it may turn out that somebody breaks them wide open um, I would like to see that happen though because I just don't think they're that good um, the fluff it's okay I mean it's not I still, I'm very much a believer that Privateer Be Press's best work was in, um, was in Mark 1, before they tried to expand the universe and expand the game as a whole, um, but there were some, there were some cool moments in this book, um, so if you're a fluffy, if you're a fluff enthusiast, um, I would, I would say it's, you know, it's, it's comparable to everything else that they've done, this was no better or no worse. Um, I didn't quite, I don't quite like the Haley, the Haley 3 stuff. I don't quite like the way that, I mean, this is more a review of, um, at what cost than, um, than, uh, the fluff relating to Haley and Reckoning, but I don't like the way that Haley 3 gained her powers. I think, you know, her enhanced powers or whatever you want to call them, her epic, epic, epic status. Um, I think it was a bit ridiculous. It, yeah, it's, it begs the question, what would have happened if Denegra was not her polar opposite? Well, and why? Why Haley seems to have so much power behind her, but Denegra doesn't. Denegra just seems to, you know, be there. Um, and yeah, it's a, yeah, I, f I find it a little bit odd that Haley seems to get so much. So Haley just seems to have so many more um, breaks than Denegra does, and I don't know if that's because she killed her or what. But in either event, I do not think that uh, I don't like the way that Haley gained her. Gained her powers, um, but on the whole, like I said, that's that's more of a review of um, at what cost than it is of the reckoning fluff. But that's purely in sim but it, it relates because if you've read at what cost, it leads directly into the signar section of the fluff. So yeah, so that's my uh, review of the Privateer Press Reckoning book, which has been out for about two weeks, maybe three weeks at this point. I'm going to say three weeks. Probably three weeks by the time this is posted anyway. Uh, yeah, on the whole, I think the quality of the book itself, um, I guess I can announce a faction winner. I think... Hmm, I didn't think about this. I've thrown this one in on the fly. My personal opinion is that um, Signa, I think, won this book. I think Ace is a jack, is a good jack to go with Kane, which if you're running Kane one or two with someone, it opens up the old rowdy slot for your other list, which is almost always good for Signa, because I think old rowdy's an excellent jack and a lot of lists want him. Um, and I think the hurricane really enhances some more casters, um, and at the same point in time isn't, um, isn't, you know, terrible. So, um, the only downside I think to the Signa stuff is the is the um, trench buster, but and that's because I think he's overcosted. I think he's too many points for what he does, just like every other trencher model in the game, because I think that's just what they've done to trenches since Mark II. They've just prevented them from being worth their cost because they were so cost effective in Mark One. And Oh, and the Hurricane, yeah, I know I did do the And obviously Haley 3 I, is, is in my opinion, the best Warcaster by a long shot. Um, oh, not by a long shot, but she's, she, I think she's she's better than the other Warcasters by enough. Um, Durst is, Durst is a, is a, is a um, good second, and I think he's a close, I think he's a close second. Um, but I still think Haley 3 is the best Warcaster in the book. And that's about it. Um, the reason why, if you're still watching and are curious as to why I didn't do a battle report, I had an opponent lined up. Twitch is off the cards for the short term. Uh, long term, possibly. I'm 
the problem is, as I said, the internet out here, I don't think is going to be able to support a Twitch stream of a War Machine game. So when I have better internet, which I have sourced, I just need to be able to afford it. Once I've done that, I will begin streaming games once a fortnight, and I'll do these every alternating fortnight. And... Um... But yeah, that's that's coming soon. But that there will be a recorded game hopefully next weekend. Um, I have a lot of personal stuff going on though, so I may not. But we shall see. Uh, if I can, I will definitely have a game stream. Uh, I will have a game up on Monday. And that's it. So until next time, keep playing like you have a pair.